there is increasing attention being paid to the brain regions that um, are dysfunctional in bipolar disorder, bipolar disorder both in children and in adults. It appears that one important region is the amygdala, which is a little area in our brain. Amygdala means almond in Greek, and it's inside our temporal lobes. So the amygdala is located in here, in the brain. And it is important in terms of identifying in the environment what's important to us emotionally. So if we see danger, for example, the amygdala will become activated. If we see anything that we consider to be very rewarding, the amygdala will become activated. And there is some evidence in both adults and children with bipolar disorder that the amygdala tends to respond more in people with bipolar disorder than it does in people without bipolar disorder. So that maybe uh, the brains of people with bipolar disorder are seeing the world as more emotional, if you will, than are people without bipolar disorder. There's also evidence in children with bipolar disorder that the amygdala is smaller than it should be. In adults, it's more of a mixed literature. Some studies say it's too small, some say it's too big. But in children, it seems that it's pretty clear that it's likely to be too small. Other parts of the brain that people have been very interested in bipolar disorder include the prefrontal cortex. And the prefrontal cortex has many different parts, but two parts of interest are the so-called dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the ventral prefrontal cortex. The ventral prefrontal cortex is very tightly connected to the amygdala and like the amygdala deals with what's rewarding and what isn't rewarding in our environment. And there's some literature, some data that like the amygdala, the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex may be too active at times in people with bipolar disorder. On the other hand, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex is the part that's kind of the rational part. It's the part that figures out what's going on in the world and figures out how can we best strategize to get what it is we want. And there's some evidence that that's less active in people with bipolar disorder than in people without. So putting it all together, you've kind of got a situation where the emotional parts of the brain may be particularly active in people with bipolar disorder. And the part of the brain that's supposed to sort of damp down the emotional parts of the brain may be a bit less active in people with bipolar disorder.